Hi, Karen. I'm so happy to see you today, even as the world is a little sad, not a little, a lot sad. Katie, it is so good to see you. You are just the, I don't even have words for it. I just, I feel like, okay, I can get through the rest of this week because we are talking. So that, thank you. Thank you. I feel the exact same way. I'm like, you're, what is the word? Like you're the no. icing on my weak cupcake. You're the, <laughs> <laughs> you're the, but it's not, you're actually not the icing. You're actually like the sugar or like the, like you're a key ingredient. The icing Ooh. seems like kind of, it's like, you know, if you have it cool, if you don't cool, but if I don't have a conversation with you, it isn't so cool. The cupcake tastes right. like shit. <laughs> <laughs> you get it. I love where this is going. Yes. Thank you. The word I was going to say was anchor. Yes. But I mean it in a good way, right? Like a good, like emotional, like foundational anchor, not like bringing down the Titanic anchor. We should move on. Yes. No, <laughs> I love this. Like an anchor that is like perfectly suited for the boat that it's attached to. And so it's like <laughs> the boat just kind of chills. And then you're like Beyonce and Jay-Z on a yacht in St. Bart's, like super chilling, having some crystal, not thinking mm. about the anchor, but also not floating away. If there's a lot of waves. We've gone real far deep into this. Katie, I'm, <laughs> I can't tell you how here for, I mean, I, I, I went to a happy place in my head when you said Cristal, cause I was like, oh, what, wait, what we're drinking Cristal now, but yes, all the yes, things. yes. Mm -hmm. All the things, all the things I actually really like, I will say that one of my coping mechanisms over the past couple of weeks has been to delete and then reinstall Instagram in the same day. And like, because, and it's not, it's not like intentional to reinstall it. It's just like, shit, I needed to, oh God, I do have to reinstall it. Damn it. And so like the one thing that I do love on Instagram is Beyonce's Instagram. Do you ever, do you follow Beyonce? I, I feel like somebody's going to take my black card if I admit that I don't, but I'm going to do it right now. Hold on. Okay. <laughs> no, it's okay. Ask me again in 30 seconds. Okay. <laughs> okay. Here's the thing about Beyonce. So I don't always look at her, her stuff, but like she has, she doesn't post well, very rarely. I think like, a, I think she posted about the George Floyd murder, but I don't think she posts that much about other things that are happening in the world. So it's a little bit of like a reprieve from the news. She basically just posts pictures of herself in really amazing outfits. Like that's it. Like no, no caption, nothing. And like, sometimes I'm like, okay, this is kind of boring, but every once in a while in the summer specifically, she will post pictures of her and Jay-Z on a yacht. I swear to God, they're probably in the South of France. And I'm just like, this is nice. I don't know. Yep. I don't know why I like it. I'm like, you look like you're having fun. I'm happy for you, Beyonce. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So my following her right now, uh, my corollary to that is Niecy Nash. Oh, I don't know Niecy Nash. Okay. So Niecy that person. Niecy Nash. Um, do you ever watch Reno 911? Oh my God. Is that the one with Andy Sandberg? Oh no, 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 no. That's um, I can't remember. Oh, you're right. That's something else. I can't remember. But Reno 911 is like a spoof on uh, Chicago or no. Okay. I have on, no idea like, what I'm talking about. It's like, a, it's a spoof on cops. Basically. Oh, it is. Okay. Got it. Yeah. Kind of right. Like, but it's the same police department. Um, they improv a lot of it, but some of it's scripted, but they improv a ton of it. It was on comedy central for oh, years. Love. That's the main thing I know her from. I know she's been in a lot of things, but like she's this comedian actress. She's like in her early fifties. She's like this beautiful curvy black woman super funny. And I don't know, a year and a half, two years ago, maybe less, she married this like super hot woman. Oh, like was not out as being gay before. I may, I mean, I think was married to a man has like adult children and then like married this like hot, younger, masculine woman, which has set all of my black lesbian friends just aflame, right? Yes. We're all just like <laughs> out of our minds. And they were on the cover of Essence. So Essence is a black women's magazine. Yes. Very heteronormative. And they had them this like super sexy photo of them on the cover. Oh my God. So I follow Nisi Nash on Instagram and like every other photo is her of this hot woman. And it's just like, this is very affirming. I feel the same way about Jay-Z and Beyonce on the yacht. I see them like hanging out in front of their fireplace and I'm like, everything's going to be okay. Exactly. <laughs> Seriously. Okay. Niecy Nash. I am linking all mm. of this in the pod, in the, the show notes. That sounds amazing. Yeah. Um, also, wow. Mm. Marrying a woman after so much time, it must've and, like, yeah. that's, and someone who's so hot. Oh my God. <laughs> and younger, like 12 years younger. Wow. Good for them. I know. 
more power to them. That's amazing. I know it Mm. is, it is interesting how like Instagram can be, at least for me, somewhat of like a horrible situation where it like really sinks my mental health. And then it can like buoy my mental health. When I look at things that have frankly, nothing to do with what's happening in the world. And just like, I like seeing people who are experiencing genuine joy, I guess. Yeah. Even curated joy. Yes. Even curated, very curated. Of course. I'm sure that the photographer for that follows around Jay-Z and Beyonce took 5,000 photos for that one picture on Instagram. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Worth it. Worth it. So worth it. Yeah. I, uh, I deleted my Instagram last night, in fact. Um, and then this morning I reinstalled it. <laughs> Glad you're back. I do enjoy your Instagram because you have all these beautiful photos of Bend oh. and all the places you go. You guys just look really happy in the, I mean, you kayak and it just looks great. Like I'm very idyllic. Thank you. I think I need to like take more pictures of Bend. I actually have had like a weird relationship with Instagram where I'm like, I don't really want to post. Like, what am Mm -hmm. I posting? I don't know. Like, what do I care about? Like, I don't know. And like, it's just like, forget Instagram that hence the deletion, but yeah. So, okay. I feel like we can't avoid it, Karen. (sighs) Here we are. So, so listeners, Thank you for listening. My guess is, is that every single podcast that you are subscribed to is talking about the Texas shooting this week. Um, and I feel like there are certain situations where you and I will mention something and we'll move on. But I feel like in this situation in particular, it's really hard to do that. And I feel like this is an appropriate conversation to have. Like I, yeah. Where, where were you to, when you heard about it, I guess. I would add actually to yes. that because I feel like we have mentioned news events if they've happened and kind of our reaction to them and moved on. And I feel like what we're all dealing with now is the, oh my God, I can't say this word, cumulative effect of it's not just Texas, it's Buffalo. So yes. yes, 10 black people shopping, going about their lives, get shot in the middle of the day in a supermarket, some motherfucker just because they're black, right? And the abortion ruling. Oh my God. And the formula shortage and all of the horrific things going on in Chicago. There's a man who I used to see him walking around. They, I guess his nickname is the walking man. It's just this guy. When I lived downtown, I saw him every single day. He just walks around. It's yeah. Like very striking looking like long, like shoulder length, kind of like a bob. Yeah. Right? Very distinctive looking. Somebody set him on fire. <gasps> Karen. Yeah. Oh, what? Yep. Mm-hmm. He's, he... I, he may already have died. Yeah. Oh. What the fuck, man? What the fuck? And I saw these headlines about the walking man being set on fire. Oh and my I was God, like, that makes oh me God, physically so... ill. And then I saw the picture and I was like, are you fucking kidding me? What the fuck is going on? I don't know how many times I can say the word fuck, but all of, all oh. of it together and all of it being man-made, specifically men-made. Yes. Like this shit isn't hard enough. You fuckers have to make it all worse by losing your fucking minds and being violent all the time. I just, I can't. Yes. Yes. So yes, um, I don't, to answer your question, I, I don't know. I don't really remember where I was when I heard about that. And I, I just had to stop. I, I had to stop reading about it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, what you're saying about it being man-made, but specifically men-made. That's a fucking mic drop right there. And that's just true. Yeah. It's just true. And I mean, there's so much to be said about that. And I have, I have so much anger, Karen. Like I have so much anger and so much sadness and so much deep empathy and so much sympathy. And I mean, there's just, it's like the stacking effect of the news and also the stacking effect of what is happening in all of our bodies as we metabolize the news. Yeah. It's like, how do you, how do you deal with that? Such a good point. Thank you for saying that because I do think this mind body connection, it's so easy to lose track of your mind body connection and your gut and all of the things. And yes, you know, I haven't been eating. (laughs) It's like, yeah, so easy to lose track of that. And 
I think I have one thing I've been, I will say, I know we're going to get into coping, but one thing I have been experiencing, experimenting with is, um, vagus nerve work. Oh, tell me please. Vagus, vagus nerve, vagus nerve. It's, um, it runs from your, basically it runs from your, like physically your brain down your neck into your digestive system. Okay. And it is really what links your brain to your gut. Like, you know, your immune system basically lives in your gut. Your mood lives in your gut, all of yes. these things. And so there's work that you can do to physically like soothe your vagus nerve that calms you down. Oh my gosh. You're kidding me. Please tell me everything because <laughs> I am acutely familiar with my vagus nerve, um, <laughs> in a lot of ways. Yes. Please tell me. Right. Like it's like, so calming it signals to your brain that you're okay. Oh, like that's what makes you anxious. Like, you know, when you get ang- nervous, that's why your stomach gets upset. Like all of that is that nerve. Yes. And so like, I, there are like, ex- like physical exercises you can do. Like you like pull your head to one side and then you look up. To, I'm not explaining this very well, but there are exercises you can do. If you Google it or look on YouTube, there are tons of vagus nerve exercises. There's one woman in particular I really like. I'll find her and send her to you. Um, wow. But yeah. And, and it's really so striking to me because I feel like I love therapy, obviously, and I love body work. And this to me has been this like eureka moment of like, oh, right. <laughs> like all of these things are connected, but what I'm doing isn't necessarily connecting them all. Yes. It's like compartmentalizing them, but there's no bridge. There's no yes. like, that's so interesting. Thank you for mentioning the vagus nerve like exercises. Like I definitely will look this stuff up and everyone, please like go on, you know, when you're listening to this, like just click like more information or whatever it is to like, you know, read about this today's episode. Cause I'll link all of those, um, YouTube videos and the, you know, different things and you know, what, whatever that woman's name is, please let me know. And then I'll put that in there. But that's so interesting. Like, cause I actually have I mean, the vagus nerve. So basically what you experience is like just a calming of your anxiety when, when you do those exercises Mm -hmm. and it's a relieving of tension. It's more like a, it's more of a physical reaction. Like, you know, I carry all of my tension there, like in my point of, you can't see me listeners, but in my shoulder, my neck and my shoulders. Yeah. And I feel like it just loosens it. Yes. Wow. Do you do this multiple times a day or do you do it? Like when you remember, I bet when I remember, that's what I would do. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 Wow. Oh my gosh. That's such an amazing pro tip. Um, yeah, I actually know about the vagus nerve because I experienced vasovagal syncope, which is the vagus nerve shutting your body down and making you pass out. And so like, I have like, I have these episodes, which don't, don't happen super often, but they've been happening. They're all related to my menstrual periods. And so like, I have experiences where I'll experience level 10 pain and then my body shuts down and I, I pass out. And this has been happening for the better part of, I mean, probably, well, how old am I? Almost 41. Like I would say that it probably started happening when I was about 20. And so like, I have, you know, I've gotten checked for endometriosis. I have all these different things that I've, you know, been, and it's not actually life-threatening, even though it's like super fucking scary, but it's so interesting what you're talking about because I think personally, I want to do more research on the vagus nerve because that is what's being triggered. Like that's, you know, and so I, I definitely think figuring out ways to cope with pain, but also to cope with like, you know, anxiety would be, I mean, anything would be helpful for that. So thank you for that. Katie, that is so scary. Oh, it sucks. It totally sucks. Yeah, it sucks. I'm, I'm thinking about getting a hysterectomy. Like there's a lot of things that, you know, it's, it's kind of, but I'm not actually anti hysterectomy. So anyway, that's for another pod, but, um, but yes, I, for me, I was getting ready to do an event, um, online with my friend, Susan, and I, the news had just hit and, um, I have a group of friends from college, all of whom are journalism majors and all of whom, you know, get the news, like the minute it comes out. And, we started this text thread and one of the, I was like, I don't actually know what you ladies are talking about. And one of them was like, please don't Google it. Like, like actually legitimately do not Google it. And of course I Googled it and I was like, oh my God, I just, yeah, that was this week, the Texas shooting. Um, And I think for me, it's like, I just have, 
you know, sometimes the stuff gets in, sometimes it gets really in, in, and I've been trying to like almost create some sort of barrier, like in my body or something. I don't even know what it's not that I don't want to experience empathy. It's not that I don't want to experience the anger that is associated with these horrible, horrific events, all of which are like stacking, like you're talking about. And I mean, I, I love that you named all of the ones, but seriously, Karen, those are the ones in the past three weeks. It's like, <sighs> that's the thing. It's like, there's, it's like, they're happening all the time. It's like, right. they're, it's like, you know, if we go back to January, it's just, so I think the thing for me is like, how do I create a barrier between what's deep, deep in my insides and what's not like, I remember there was a shooting back in, I think it was 2014. It was at the nightclub in Orlando. Do you remember that? Oh yeah, of course. Was that uh, Pulse, the gay club? Pulse, Pulse. Yes. That was what, 2018 or 2019? Oh, was it? Okay. So yeah. it was much more recent mm -hmm. and that one got in big time. And it was like, I, cause I, I just did a deep dive into all of the details and like the, you know, the survivor testimonies and like all of these different things. And like, I was in a, I don't want to say a funk. That's not the right word because that seems so like flippant. I was in a depression about it for a while. And it's like, I think that there's this, I, I, I am trying to figure out the marriage between knowing what's happening and wanting to know and being an educated citizen and being an angry citizen, which I think is part of this and protecting like my actual physical body, because like me going down and I'm, by I'm down. I mean like fetal position on the ground, like it doesn't help anyone. And then at the same time, I also want to take care of myself and not shame myself for being in a fetal position on the ground. It's hard. Like all of this stuff is hard to navigate. Today's episode of Of Course I'm Not Okay, the podcast is brought to you by the unofficial start of summer. Yay, summer. Today, if you're listening to this on the day it comes out, it's Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day, everybody. Thank you for your service, all people who are active and veterans in the military. And yeah, let's get ready for summer and all that comes with it. Memorial Day celebrators, I wish you a happy, healthy, non-food poisoning induced day. Like I hope that you don't eat any kind of cream-based salads that have been sitting out too long because you're not used to being outside eating. I don't, ah. Oh yeah, those cream bag salads, those macaroni salads, those egg salads. Mm. I mean, let's name it a lot of other salads. There's a lot of them out there that are all cream based. And if you are already not a dairy person, just steer clear. Go for the uh, the single serving of watermelon. Like I, you know, like that's a oh, watermelon, my fave. I know, me too. Well, and you said the single serving because you and all I are also very skeeved out about this whole sharing food thing no. yes yeah i mean i will say that i had a super bowl party back in 2007 and everyone was using the same chips and dip and everyone got the flu so <gasps> this is all to say that just be aware listeners we are not medical professionals but if you're sharing shit just have just be aware like just oh that's no. a thing. yeah it's it's a thing so i mean you'll probably be fine we don't want to just freak you out this is not a negative podcast but i will say that you know it's just something to consider and um yeah welcome summer and all that comes with it including potential food poisoning and also including mosquito bites i'm here for them even though they're can they can be rough sunshine like pool parties those yes. are the positive things hell yeah Yes. Cherry season. Yes. Peach God. season. Oh gosh. Mm. There's so many great fruits that are, anyway, I just, summer's the best. So yes, happy summer. And uh, thank you for sponsoring this podcast. It's almost impossible to navigate. And yeah. the feeling of helplessness that's associated with all of it is also really difficult for me. Yes. And I feel like the, also the psychological torture of these motherfuckers pretending like it's not a problem or all, just all of the gaslighting that happens around all of these things that happen. Yes. Like, 
the cowardice of our elected officials and the gaslighting, I, I feel like that is also an element of this that is that makes it that much harder. It's like, not only are these horrific things happening, but then we have this group of old white men committed to convincing all of us that it's either not happening, that it's not a big deal, that the, the blame is placed somewhere else. Like all of these fucked up conspiracy theories they put out, like I just, really find that part of it very difficult. And I also struggle with this way that we, because of the news cycle, because of how quickly these things happen, yeah. that we react in the moment and nothing meaningful happens because we just move on. Yes, totally. And that goes back to the feelings of helplessness. Yeah. Like, I can't tell you how many conversations I've been having with friends over the past couple of days where I mean, it's shocking. Like a lot of my friends who are, and it's, I guess it's not, well, it is shocking. I don't know what I, I want to say about it, but like, these are people who are activists. These are people who are extremely passionate about the things that you and I, Karen, are passionate about. And I'm hearing for the first time out of their mouths, like, what difference can I make? Like what difference, like, and that kind of, those kind that scares me a lot because mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, if these people are thinking this and other people are thinking it too. And I just find that like, it's just hard to like, hold on to hope, hold on to optimism, hold on to these different things. And I don't have the answer. I mean, mm -mm. I don't. It's so it's not funny, but it's not funny. haha. But as you were talking, all I could think was we have to have Tanya back on. I was actually thinking that this morning when I was eating breakfast, <laughs> not even kidding. Like I, Tanya, I love you. I know you're listening. I hope you're listening. Um, yeah, it's time. I think we need, yeah, we, yeah, we need you back. Um, because she, she is literally the most hopeful, optimistic, like practical, like practically optimistic person I've ever encountered in my life. Like yes. intellectually, practically optimistic aside from you, of course, Katie. So aside uh, from you, Karen, I'm the same. I agree. Yeah. Tanya, uh, we'll be in touch. We will be in touch. We need listeners. Listeners, don't worry. She's coming back. I hope. <laughs> if you have availability, yes, we hope. We also have not reached out yet. So yes, <laughs> like that's. <laughs> we literally just decided right now. Yeah, this exact second. Yes, but okay. So Tanya is a great like talking with her is a great coping mechanism. I think, but like yes. going into like all right. So there are two things that are true. There are these horrific events and how, you know, like we're metabolizing them and then, okay, how do we in our daily life as individuals cope? Like, how do we deal with it? I mean, for me, it's like, it's the, you know, being super intentional about what I'm consuming in a way that's like militant. And, you know, I, I definitely have shut off NPR right now. Like I'm not able to listen to you know, I, I'm more of an auditory learner in terms of news. Like I really love listening to the news and then, but now I'm, I've switched to reading the news, but only like hard, like paper, like actual, like physical paper. And it's like, I can like look to the side and like, not have as much, um, I don't know, like the blue light behind the Instagram mm -hmm. or, you know, whatever, if I'm reading the New York times online or whatever it is, like, I sometimes can get more drawn into things and not know what I'm like signing up for versus like being in a physical form. I'm also just a massive fan of physical newspapers, but what about you, Karen, the vaso mm -hmm. the, or the vagal, um, you know, like therapy, you know, coping that sounds so Jedi. I love that. Is there anything else that helps you? I mean, I, you and I both work in journalism and I think it is hard to feel like I can turn things. Luckily, I mean, right now I work at a bi-weekly, so I feel like I can, I, I feel fine turning things off. And, yeah. you know, as you were talking about the, I love the idea of the physical paper because you have more control over how you're consuming it. Yes. You know, it's not spitting out 20 more articles that you should read. So, oh, if you're reading this and you should read this, you know, totally not doing that. And I mean, it also makes me think of like almost thinking about news consumption, like the paleo diet. Like, Ooh. like this idea that like, this is how our paleo ancestors ate and how they processed food and replicating that. If you think about it, the way that we processed news in the past was like something would happen. And then two weeks later, 
you to find out about it, right? Like, yeah, I mean, talk about like you want to go like back to the paleo era, but I mean, you know, even not that long ago, you read about things the next day or yes. hours later. I feel like we weren't meant to consume information the way that we currently consume information. Our bodies can't, to use your word, like metabolize the information the way that we are doing it. And I just love this idea, like you're saying, of being so intentional about it and keeping that in mind. Like we were never meant to be constantly bombarded with news, most of it fucking terrible. Oh my gosh, Karen, I feel like that's an entire another podcast. And I'm so excited about you introducing this idea of paleo news. Not even kidding. Like that is such like a perfect metaphor that is so smart because you're totally right. Like when we were kids, I mean, I remember watching like Tom Brokaw and Peter Jennings and like, it was 30 minutes, maybe 60 minutes tops. Like that's it. Like that's, that was the news like CNN. I mean, I know CNN has been around for longer than that, but like, it wasn't the 24 hour news cycle Mm -mm. that then created so many other 24 hour news cycles. And so it's like, I just, that's so true. And it's so interesting because like, I remember being a kid and my dad watching Peter Jennings and then just switching it off. And then we would like do something else. I don't know. Like, it's like be a normal person versus watching the news and then scrolling Instagram and then falling asleep to Twitter and then waking up and all of it. Like, it's just an interesting commentary on where we are right now. And there's a total correlation between the burnout and the mental health crises. In my opinion, I'm saying this all anecdotally, but I can only speak from my own experience that I just cannot consume news all the time. I can't. Mm -mm. No. And we weren't meant to. No. And, and if you think about, so the, you know, network television of our childhood would linger on a story when something catastrophic happened. Totally, totally. But now everything becomes, we we're now we're in, we interrupt this broadcast. It's like every single thing, like you, we have access to literally news that's all on all the time. And we never had that before. Yes. I remember so well when I was watching TV and there was a, we interrupt this broadcast because Mm -hmm. princess Diana had died. It was 1997. I remember it vividly. And I went upstairs and I told my dad and I was like, dad, princess died just was killed. And he's like, no, she wasn't. That was his exact reaction. And like, he was like, no, she wasn't. And I was like, it's on the news. And like, he ran downstairs And we looked at the TV together and it was just so shocking, Karen. I mean, that was like such an enormous to this day, like news story. And it's interesting because it's like, that was the news story of the, I I swear to God, the decade, but like definitely the year. And it's like, it's so interesting. Like what you're saying that it's, it's constant. It's every single day. It's, it's, you know, so Definitely being careful about news consumption. I think the other thing that's helping me is talking to my loved ones. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I've definitely been connecting with different people that I love over Marco Polo, over the phone, over text, whatever. And just being like, Hey, I'm just thinking of you. Like, how are you doing? Like I've been texting a lot of friends who have young children and just saying like, you don't have to write me back, but I just, I just want you to know, like, I'm here. Like, I'm so sorry. I, I cannot imagine what it's like for a parent right now. And Mm -mm. that does help me just to feel less alone because you can feel so alone in your mind. Yeah. I feel like the isolation, absolutely. Like, I don't know where that, whatever that statistic is about loneliness is the equivalent of chain smoking. Mm -hmm. (laughs) What, you know what I mean? Oh yeah, totally. The impact of it on your body. Yeah. That's a really good, that is a really good coping mechanism. Yeah. And just, just being around people, even when you don't feel like it, even if you're crying, even if like, it's awkward that you're saying the thing and like, you're around someone that maybe you haven't been that vulnerable with fuck it. Like who cares? They have these feelings too. You know, like, it's like everyone is a person in the world. And (laughs) uh, so I guess I just, I want to send everybody love who's listening, you know, thank you for listening. Thank you for being a person in the world. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. We appreciate all of you and please take care of yourselves, whatever coping looks like, even if it looks like looking at the title of this podcast and being like, nope, 
<laughs> yep. <laughs> Good for you. Good for you. Yes. Consume you only for, what you want. Thank you for taking care of yourself. Yes. See you next week. <laughs>